My name is Peter Rohern. I'm a managing director and head of the North American investment grade capital markets and syndicate business. And I've been a part of the Citigroup organization for about 15 years. Well, we often refer to cash on corporate balance sheets as a lazy balance sheet. Uh, however, there's good justification for the amount of cash that corporations have held uh, recently. And that largely has to do with the uncertainty in the overall global economy, uh, concerns about changes in the tax regime, and general uncertainty in the world today. So cash positions are about as high as they've ever been on corporate balance sheets. In fact, the Federal Reserve has published data recently suggesting that there's 1.8 trillion of cash on corporate balance sheets that represents about a 25 percent increase uh, since the beginning of the financial crisis. However, I don't anticipate this materially changing financing requirements for corporations. They still need to repay maturing debt. They still need to repurchase stock. Uh, hopefully, we'll be in a higher growth environment economically, which would suggest that they'll want to expand and utilize cash uh, in that manner. I would argue that the cash positions that corporations have today are largely a manifestation of what everyone's experienced over the past couple years, which has been massive uncertainty uh, in the world. Uh, so I don't, I don't foresee it materially impacting issuance volumes in the near term. Corporates represent a very attractive asset class, particularly relative to very low yielding alternatives, whether they're money markets or U.S. government securities or agency securities. The corporate market is a very anticipatory market, so it anticipates economic recovery. And many believe that we are at the very beginning of an improvement in the economy. So from a, a fundamental point of view, corporates are an attractive asset class for investors. Um, it's also important to note that the amount of refinancing, the amount of debt that's maturing over the course of the next two to three years is significant. And that was largely put in place in the peak years, the boom years, economic years in, in 2005, 2006, 2007, all that debt needs to be refinanced. So I'm, again, optimistic that we'll be quite active next year. Well, corporate issuance volumes, as you might imagine, are closely tied to um, growth of the underlying businesses, M&A activity, stock repurchase activity. So any of those uh, factors can be large drivers of activity. A few years ago, with uh, a significant build-out in nuclear assets, we saw the utility sector represent uh, an area of particular growth. The financial services sector, as banks grew their balance sheets significantly over the course of the past decade, also represented an area of tremendous growth. Where we see real opportunities is the, um, are particularly related to stock repurchase activity. So we've seen uh, tech companies and other media companies uh, issue debt securities to replace or repurchase, rather, their common shares. Uh, this is a very uh, common tactic, uh, corporate finance tactic, taking um, expensive equity and replacing it with tax-deductible debt. Obviously, it increases leverage, but it is a very attractive way to enhance returns. So I think you will see certain sectors of issuance reflecting uh, increased stock repurchase activity, uh, M&A activity, uh, as well as uh, hopefully an improving economy, which will cause, I think, issuers generally to need additional financing. We've seen very low coupons uh, from corporate issuers largely in the period of time after the announcement of the quantitative easing policy and prior to its implementation. In other words, the market rallied, the Treasury market rallied in anticipation of, of the uh, subsequent purchase of Treasury securities through the quantitative easing program. We've given back much of those gains uh, in terms of the performance of underlying uh, Treasury securities. So we've seen Treasuries move off of the low yields that we had experienced a few months ago. My guess is that we may see certain issuers uh, be able to access some of the lowest ever coupons, um, but I think we'll have a hard time uh, matching or beating 
the experience that certain highly rated issuers had a few months ago where they achieved, in some cases, coupons uh, that were below 1%. Um, in the case of uh, certain large uh, tech companies and, and others. Whether it's quantitative easing or the sovereign debt crisis, whatever it might be, you know, those are clearly going to be factors that, that uh, introduce volatility into the markets. But I think the good news is, is that we've seen very robust activity. In fact, some of the most active issuance periods in the history of the corporate bond market occurred in 2010, and I'm thinking in particular of the, uh, of the early September period when we had well over $110 billion of securities issued in U.S. dollars in the month alone of September. Well, as I said, we remain optimistic about the corporate market. Credit spreads, despite the fact that they've performed quite well over the course of the past two years, still remain relatively elevated, so they, they represent good value for investors. I think that the technical backdrop will continue to be supportive. In other words, there'll be more money flowing into the investment-grade corporate market. I expect issuance volumes to continue to be reduced somewhat relative to the activity over the past couple of years, which will again uh, create a, a favorable technical backdrop. And with an improving economy and a stable stock market, I think all those factors suggest that 2011 will, will be a very solid year for investment-grade credit.